Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We've done similar problems before, but I just thought about this problem and I think it's a really nice problem. Not because I came up with it, but in general these problems are kind of nice. Because when you look at a problem like this, you're probably thinking, if x is even, then I can get a positive answer from a negative base, right? But what you raise negative 3, 2 to get 27. Now, I'm thinking about 3 to the third power is 27, but my base is negative 3. So can I still get positive 27? What, what is going to happen in this case? So here's the problem. You can find a number, right, hopefully, like a positive or even number like 4, and raise it to negative 3 to the fourth power, but that's going to give you an 81. If you use a 2, that's going to give you a 9. What are some of the even numbers between 2 and 4? There's none. So there's no even number that would satisfy this, which means we can't solve it and no solutions. No, actually, there are solutions, but the solutions are very complex. Okay, let's get into it. Actually, they're not as hard. So to be able to solve this problem, I'm going to basically use complex numbers because I can't solve this problem in the real world, and some problems don't even have solutions in the complex world, right? You probably know them. Square root of some negative number equals some other number, whatever. There are some numbers. I mean, I can really quickly think of something like this. X plus 1 equals X has no solutions whatsoever, okay? Anyways, infinity? No, we're not taking limits. Okay, now, let's go ahead and see how we can do this. First of all, to be able to handle this appropriately, I do need to complexify things. So how do I turn negative 3 to a complex number? I gotta think about the the argon diagram. Is that what it is? The complex plane. So we have a real part and an imaginary part. And basically negative 3 means negative 3 is negative 3 plus 0i. And that's basically represented by the point negative 3 comma 0. Which is on the real axis but on the negative part. So the angle that it makes actually if you kind of turn this into a vector or a segment then it kind of makes pi radians that is going to be our argument and it's three units away from zero which gives us our modulus so that's what you need you need theta and r so that you can write pretty much any complex number as r e to the i theta if you are new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos on my other channel what's that channel called a plus bi right conveniently named okay great so anyways let's go ahead and take a look at this problem then r is 3 so negative 3 can be written as 3 times something and that's going to be e to the power i pi in this case my angle is pi but here's the thing you know if you replace pi with 3 pi it's still going to be correct if you replace it with 5 pi if you add any multiples of 2 pi, then this will be correct. In other words, there's going to be a period that you can keep adding and you'll get the same answer. But let's just go with the principal value. We can also uh, talk about the general solution if we have some time left. Okay? So that's our negative 3. What about the 27? Oh, that's easy. 27 units, obviously, it's not going to fit, but this is not drawn to scale. Let's just pretend, right? So 27 units away from zero, and obviously it doesn't make an angle, it's right on the positive real axis. Therefore, the angle between this line and that line is zero radians, or we can call, let's call this alpha, uh, either zero or maybe two pi radians, or any multiple of two pi. You can call this two pi n. So we can, and what about the modulus? It was 27 times e to the power i times 2 pi n. Okay, great. We could probably write this as 2 pi n i, uh, which I'm going to do right now. 2 pi n i. It's usually better to put i at the end, but Euler's formula actually kind of gives us uh, this form e to the i theta, which is cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's why we usually write the i first. You don't have to because it's commutative, right? Hopefully. So we got our numbers. Let's go ahead and place them. Negative 3 to the power x. Negative 3 is 3 times e to the i pi. 
and then I'm gonna raise it to the power x and then this is gonna be the result 27 times e to the power 2 pi and I so my goal is to solve for x let's go ahead and solve it and then we're gonna be looking at some results from Wolfram Alpha hopefully we can compare and get hopefully we'll get the same thing right okay so when you raise uh, both sides to some number obviously uh, you're going to get uh, an inequality but uh, we want to bring the power down so why don't we just ln both sides so the complex logarithm we're gonna log this side and log that side with the natural log and that's gonna give us something nice so we don't have to go into uh, 3 e to the power ln 3 stuff same thing now we have the ln of a product but first we have to take care of powers bring this to the front x ln and then now this is actually kind of like a product and we are logging the product so that's going to be the sum of two ln's can I write it as ln 3 plus ln e to the i pi yes and on the right hand side we have the same scenario ln 27 plus ln e to the power 2 pi n i but wait a minute ln e is 1 so when you move these to the front you're going to get 1 times that those so it's going to be x times ln 3 plus i pi equals ln 27 plus 2 pi n i all right cool cool now what are we going to do we're going to solve for x so i think we should divide both sides by what this expression so let's do it x equals ln 27 plus 2 pi n i divided by ln 3 plus pi i. You could also write i pi, but I wanted to keep the pi i at the end um, to make them kind of look alike. Anyways, so that would be the answer. But what is n? n is an integer. Did I forget to say that? n is element of z. Zahlen, right? German for number, I think. Anyway, so that will be the x value, but wait a minute. Take a look at this expression. If I didn't have the pi stuff, ln 27 over ln 3 would be ln 3 cubed or 3 ln 3 divided by ln 3, and that would give me a 3. But unfortunately, uh, 3 does not give me 27. This is not going to work. But we're kind of close. So the i needs to get in there. Well, n can be 0. Wait a minute. Can't we do that? Yes n can be 0 since n is an integer let's go ahead and test it out if n is 0 then x becomes ln 27 over ln 3 plus pi i uh oh we're just missing it by a little bit pi i is an extra piece but uh, we can go ahead and you know multiply by the conjugate conjugates conjugate and now from here we should be getting something like ln 27 times ln 3 minus pi ln 27i and then divided by ln 3 squared plus pi squared. <laughs> okay, are you happy with that? Well, the problem is this is going to have a real part like this and then we're going to have an imaginary part so we can kind of separate those if you want it pi ln 27 over ln 3 squared plus pi squared and then multiply by so we wrote x in standard form like this all right now let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram alpha which is probably going to look something like this hopefully right let's take a look so that's what i get from Wolfram alpha and notice that it unfortunately writes the ln as log log is you know natural log and then hopefully are they the same go ahead and find out and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye